sleeping baby. So maybe like me, you need a quiet way to play your tube amps at home. Or maybe you have an amp where the sweet spot for tone is just way too blisteringly loud to be useful for whatever setting you need it in. But either way, the solution that you need is an attenuator. Now, if you don't know, an attenuator is this little box that goes between your guitar amplifier and the speaker. It basically gives you a second volume knob, a way to turn the amp down without changing the gain staging of the preamp and power amp sections of the amplifier. Now, obviously, there are a ton of attenuators out there that you can buy. But as you'll see in this video, it really is not too difficult to build your own. Now basically what this little box is going to do is convert the power of our guitar amplifier from volume into heat. And the way it's going to do that is with this little guy right here called an L-pad. Now this is basically just a giant potentiometer. This one is 8 ohms, 100 watts. And if you just had an 8 ohm amplifier, all you have to do is literally put this in a box with some input output jacks. And that's all there is to it. In fact, it's so simple, the wiring for that is literally right there on the box. Now, I also want to use this attenuator box with my Silvertone Twin 12 amp, which is a 4 ohm amplifier. So I'm going to add an extra resistor and switch to this box so that I can use it with both 4 and 8 ohm amplifiers. So to get started, we need this L-pad, two quarter inch jacks, some wire. Now, if you want to build the switch to change between 4 and 8 ohms, you also need this 8 ohm 50 watt resistor and a switch. We need an enclosure to put everything in. Now you could buy a guitar pedal style enclosure for this and that would work perfectly. But I actually dug around in my basement and found this old data transfer switch. Now this is just a little box that will be perfect to repurpose for this. So to get started, I laid out my components where I wanted them. I really wanted to use the existing holes in this enclosure since they were basically perfect. And on the back, I can replace the three, what I think are PS2 ports with the input and output jacks, as well as the four eight ohm switch. Then on the front where the selector switch was, I can put the L pad. Now this just barely doesn't fit, but I could take the metal cover off the back and then ever so slightly sand down the plastic housing on the disc sander, and then everything fit perfectly. Now the first thing that I did was lay out where the extra orange resistor needed to go on the bottom middle of the box, and then I could drill the two mounting holes, cut the threads in them with a tap, and then I could put some thermal compound on the resistor to help it stay cool and use the enclosure as kind of a heat sink and screw it down to the bottom of the enclosure. Now, since all of the components just push through holes from the inside and then get tightened down with nuts from the outside, I could go ahead and basically solder everything up outside of the enclosure and then install the whole thing at once, once it was done with the exception of that orange resistor. Now, meticulous wire management is not something that I can be bothered to do, even considering that all of you will forever see my rat's nest inside this pedal. I just still don't think it's worth the effort. But rest assured, however, all the wiring is correct. I double checked it and all the solder joints are well made and solid. And you can check the website article in the description for schematics for this project with and without the four ohm switch. So with everything soldered up, I could install it all in the bottom half of the case and try it out. Time for a disclaimer. If you don't do this right and you don't wire things right, you can cause damage to your amplifier. That's on you though. That's not on me. I don't take responsibility for it at all. I recommend making sure that you have everything wired up correctly. So double, triple check everything. And I also made sure to check the input by measuring the resistance from positive to negative on the input jack. Now that read four and eight ohms correctly, depending on which way the switch was set, which I then made sure to label with a Sharpie. Next, I plugged this box into a cheap solid state Marshall practice amp that I have since it would mean the least to me if something happened to it. So everything was fine with that amplifier, and then I tried it with this little crate tube amp. That worked fine too. So now I was pretty confident that I could go ahead and plug it into my bigger, nicer tube amps without any problems. Now at this point, the attenuator is done, but it would be a bad idea to seal everything up inside this enclosure. 
Now, if you remember from earlier, I said that this box works by converting power from volume into heat. So naturally this little box is going to get warm. Now, if that heat doesn't have anywhere to go, then it is going to get really warm, which is bad. So we need to drill some holes in the box to let the heat out. Now I printed out this little template here that's a pattern of dots that resembles a spectrum analyzer and kind of my little logo thing. And I could take this to the garage and first use an auto punch to mark the holes, then come back with an owl and a hammer and make the marks deeper. And then I used a step bit in my drill to drill a whole bunch of holes. Now this part was the worst part of this project and I think it took longer than anything else than actually building the whole thing. Now it was my intention to drill out every hole, but I actually liked the look of these partially drilled holes. Maybe you could chalk that up to laziness, but I decided to leave the top rows only partially drilled and it gives it this sort of two-tone effect. I'm not sure if this amount of holes that I drilled is gonna be sufficient to keep everything cool, but basically I'm gonna keep an eye on it and if things start to get too hot, then I can always come back and drill more of these holes out if I need to. Anyways, that is it for this one. Really happy with the way this box came out and it's come in handy already. As you can see, it's a really simple project to do. You basically just need one of these things here, but it's not too hard to build. If you have any questions about this project, let me know what those are in the comments down below. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe to not miss any future videos. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day. Doo doo doo. <laughs>